Gus succulents. Want some more? Listen, there are lots of ways to make that happen. Like, a lot. Here's the thing though, science has proven that the funnest way to grow your gargantuan gang of gorgeous greenery is by the employment of a succulent leaf propagation tray. Oh. Don't worry about it. Anyway, making and using a succulent leaf propagation tray isn't just fun, it's also easy as f so yeah, if you're ready to learn a fun, easy way to multiply your collection of succulents, then stick the f around. Because in this video, Gab Monster, Yabonton Melon, the strikingly attractive Lady Space Cowgirl and I are fit to get into all that sh**. The tools necessary for making your very own succulent leaf propagation tray are a tray of some kind, a roll of paper towels, an old regular towel, some scissors, some potting mix, and a home and garden sprayer. I like to use these trays because they're breathable. I'm not sure what they're called, but for this video, I'm going to refer to it as a plastic nursery tray. I get these for free from nurseries or the garden centers of big box stores every time I purchase an idiotically gigantic quantity of houseplants or flowers. Uh, here for if you can't find one of these though, pretty much any kind of tray will work. Now, since the tray I'm using is breathable, I'm going to use a regular all-purpose potting mix for the soil in my tray instead of a cactus mix, even though we are propagating succulents. If, however, you end up making a succulent leaf propagation tray with a non-breathable tray, such as a baking sheet or a restaurant serving tray, I would recommend using a quicker drying potting soil, such as a cactus mix. Anyway, now that we got our shit together, let's partray. I mean, step one in this process is to cut out a section of regular towel that is just a little bit bigger than the area in the bottom of your tray. Don't worry about it. What you want is for about a half an inch of towel to go up each of the vertical interior sides of your tray. Then in the tray on top of your regular towel, lay down two layers of paper towels. Fill your tray with a layer of potting soil. I live in the high desert of northeastern Arizona where there is very little humidity and where things dry out really quickly. So I'm going to put down a half an inch of potting soil in my container. If you live somewhere with more humidity though, you might consider using less soil in order to ensure that your rooting medium doesn't stay moist for too long and cause problems with the moisture sensitive roots of your future plants. That's it as far as making the tray is concerned. Now, let's make the most of our newly acquired real estate. Here I have with me three very overgrown succulents, a lavender scallops kalanchoe, a jelly bean sedum, and a copper tone sedum. Each of these succulents can be propagated from leaves, and each is in need of a makeover of a varying degree of extremity. Such makeovers are sure to leave us with some loose leaves.
Now, a quick point about the nature of the layers in your propagation tray. The reason for using a regular towel in the bottom of your propagation tray is to ensure that your propagation tray will last longer. Listen, depending on the type of succulent leaves you choose to propagate in your tray, your tray might be in use for a long time. And because the methods for propagating plants in this way involve moistening the soil in the tray repeatedly, if you were to use only paper towel, eventually the paper towel would break down and you would lose lots of baby succulents through the holes in the bottom of your plastic nursery tray. The reason for the layer of paper towels on top of the layer of regular towel is to protect the newly formed roots of your future succulent babies. Your plant's roots will have a much harder time penetrating and anchoring themselves into the tightly woven fibers of paper towel than they might the loose porous fibers of a regular towel. This will make removing your baby succulents from the tray much safer and much easier down the road. And if your succulent friends do succeed in anchoring themselves to the paper towels, you can simply leave that bit of towel attached to the plant when the time comes to get it potted into a regular container. When it comes to moistening the newfound habitat of your freshly deposited future succulent friends, most videos and online tutorials that I've seen have recommended the use of one of these. That's cool and all if you're looking to burn tons of calories and want your forearms to be swole as f But if you're not looking for an arm workout but would rather see your plants be swole, then I recommend moistening your tray with one of these. You might not burn as many calories, but it'll save you a lot of time and effort. Here's the thing though about the sprayer. There's a good chance that you own one of these already. And if that's the case, you may be tempted to use the one that you already have. That's cool, but be absolutely sure that your sprayer has never housed any kind of a weed spray. If you have any doubt as to the history of chemicals that have made their way through your sprayer, I highly recommend just going and buying a new one because even the slightest residue of Roundup or Ground Clear could doom your future plants to an early and watery grave. This sprayer cost, I think, around eight US dollars. And in the past, I bought some really nice ones that had adjustable nozzles for, I think, around $15. Personally, I've seen the best results when I moisten my trays every other day. Again, though, I live somewhere very dry, very windy, and pretty f***ing sunny. So you might consider spraying your trays more or less often depending on environmental factors. As far as deciding where to keep your trays, the best kind of light for succulents in this stage of development is the brightest indirect sunlight you can find. This might vary a little bit depending on which type of succulent you decide to propagate, but in general, succulents in this stage of development will grow most quickly if given lots of light, but they aren't able to fall back on the vast stores of water that mature succulents are. So being overheated in direct sunlight may just be a death sentence. Okay, people, let's get serious for just a second. Now, you've probably heard that propagating your succulents from leaves is not the fastest nor the most efficient way to multiply your succulents. And yeah, let's be real, there's some truth to that. If you want to multiply your succulent collection as quickly as possible, then you're probably better off propagating them from cuttings. Also, there are succulents that simply cannot be propagated from leaves. But listen, Chances are that even when propagating your succulents from cuttings, or maybe even just repotting them, or really through the course of, I guess, any kind of succulent care, it's very likely that one way or another, you're going to end up with some loose leaves on your hands. I'm talking to you, Sharon. I remember that look in your eye that Thursday at your favorite nursery when you spotted that gorgeous eye catcher of a donkey tail or Sedum morganianum burrito. Let's be real. Anyone would have fallen in love with those long gray blue green dangling stems. But then on Friday night, when getting your plant out of that awful faux terracotta nursery pot and into something, well, a little more comfortable, tragedy struck for real. Time stood still as that newly acquired leafy friend of yours flew through the air. And then, upon impact, chaos. 
a total shit show. I'm talking potting soil, sharp bits of clay, bare burrito stems, and chubby bulbous burrito leaves all over everywhere. Now, your plant survived. It may not be the dazzling doll of a donkey tail you fell in love with that Thursday at the nursery, but hey, it's on the road to recovery and will someday shine again. And as for all those loose burrito leaves, Listen up, lads and ladies. If you want to know how this salty squad of Sunday succulents is doing, then check out this update video to stay, you know, up to date. And if this finger just pointed to the empty corner of your cell phone screen, my sincerest apologies. The thing is, I really f***ed up and haven't gotten around to making that video yet because, you know, I'm a procrastinator. Hey, listen. Do you like bad graffiti, worse jokes, wacky macrame, and pretty good advice about taking care of your house plants? Well then f***ing subscribe! <laughs> Thanks Gavin Tom Miller. That's right, click that notification bell too so you never miss a new video.